Hello, welcome back to Revender in Sports and a video I didn't want to have to make, but unfortunately we had one of our riders go down yesterday on our um, typical Tuesday ride. And so I thought, why not use it as a learning experience or a teaching moment for you, my viewers? So before we get on to the topic of today, please like and subscribe and please hit that notification bell so you know when I've posted another video. So, um, as you can tell from the title, we had a, a one of our riders go down yesterday and it was raining, but not really raining. And so I thought, let's talk about this and let's see if I can help some of you riders out there uh, this these um, upcoming winter months. Okay, so disclaimer, I do not profess to be an authority on riding in the rain. Um, I live in San Diego. Um, according to the Wikipedia, it says that we have about 148 sunny days, about 117 partly cloudy days. And then, you know, those partly cloudy days almost always turn into a sunny day anyway. It's just a, a morning type of cloud cover and then it usually burns off. So, 148 sunny days is is actually probably a lot more than that. But interestingly, the annual rainfall is only about 12 inches. So that's not really that much compared to other states, other parts of the country, and other parts of the world. So again, I'm not an authority, just a few things I want to share with you. And, you know, if if you live in this type of environment where it rains three, four, five times a week, you're going to be more of an expert than I am. However, in the past, I did ride a lot in the rain. I always thought, well, while everyone else is is at home, I'm out training and I'm getting um, the benefit of an extra training day in my race season. And our rain here in San Diego is typically December through March. So that was also the off season to get ready for the new race season. And so I would train all winter long. And if it rained, it rained. I would just get out. But <laughs> but now I, I really don't want to go out for a th two, three hour ride and have to clean my bike for an hour when I get back. So that's not what I'm doing lately. But yesterday, um, we did have a little bit of light drizzle and I thought, well, why not? Okay, let's get out. So I want to talk about five things. And so the first is tire pressure. The next is the worst time that I think uh, to be out riding. Uh, third thing is tire choice. Fourth is race line. And five, disc brakes with a question mark. So let's talk about the first thing, tire pressure. If you're riding and you know you're going to ride out in the rain or maybe you're out riding and it starts to rain, to help with your tire traction, I would suggest you lower your tire pressure 10 to 20 PSI depending on how much you weigh and how much tire pressure you are already running. Could be more than 20 PSI and that might help get better tire traction. So. If you're running tubes, you can, you're going to have to be cautious and careful of pinch flats. And if you're running tubeless, that's not as important. But I have seen tires uh, burp, and that is a, a little bit of sealant I'll see pop out from the bead of the tire and the hook of the rim. Sometimes I've seen um, some... Um, spurts of sealant along the rim and tire bed. So, you know, it can happen as well, but typically with tubeless setups, you can lower the tire pressure a little bit. Next thing is <clears throat> the worst time that I think to be out riding. So when it's pouring down rain, you know, it just doesn't feel comfortable to get out and ride. But then we think, okay, if it's a light, light drizzle or a mist, it's okay. Let's let's get out because it won't be as bad. However, 
I'm here to tell you that's probably one of the worst times to be out riding in the rain, rain finger quotes, because at that point, there's just not been enough rainfall to rinse the roads of all the crap that could be out there. So any type of oils or uh, fuels, anything that could be out on the road that could create some type of slippery surface exasperated by a little bit of moisture that hasn't been washed off yet. So, you know, if you're right, if you're riding along and you see that beautiful color spectrum of, of all, the, all the colors in, um, in the color spectrum, that is definitely something to avoid, but we don't pay that much attention to it in the dry, but in the wet, you really need to pay attention to it. So this was kind of the conditions that we had yesterday where we had just a tiny mist and not much more. It wasn't, I wouldn't even call it a drizzle. So um, this then created this very slippery surface. And when you have this light mist, it's almost like riding on an ice rink. Everything is slippery and you just have to be really careful. Okay, so the next thing is um, tire choice. Now, it's fairly common in most places to switch from a race compound or a high performance tire to a more high mileage tire, winter tires, four season tires, those kinds of things. But and you have to do what's most comfortable for you. If puncture resistance is really important to you, if during the winter months there is a lot more debris on the road, then sure, ride a more puncture proof tire. Uh, personally, I don't change the type of tire I ride. Year round, I ride the same high end performance tire. I prefer having better grip, better performance all the time. And, you know, this is one of the things that you have to be conscious of. If you're riding a high mileage tire or a puncture proof tire, one of the things that's going to suffer is the grip of the tire. And this might have attributed to um, the rider's crash yesterday. Just, um, you know, tire pressure tire choice, the rubber uh, not being as grippy, maybe, I don't know. Um, I wanted to share this with you because this was a guide that uh, Continental used to put out during the GP4000, which was their high-end race tire. Um, they took this out of the catalog in 2017, so it was really frustrating for me uh, because I used to guide a lot of my sales staff as a store manager and then as an owner, this is how I uh, explained the tire applications. So if you look here, the more, the more filled in the dots are, the better it is in each one of these categories. And wet and dry grip, which let me do this real quick. So the wet and dry grip is here and that's four, uh, five, but yet down here in the gator skins, it's only three. And then for people who want, you know, the puncture resistance, it's interesting that a lot of people buy the gator skins for puncture resistance. And that's here at four. And yet the race tires have better puncture resistance. But, you know, you get the high mileage and high durability for your gator skins and you get lower durability here for the performance tires. But personally, I just think that a, a better tire for all conditions, I should say better grip in all conditions is better. That's just my opinion. Next thing is, I wish to talk to you about the race line. If you are about to take a turn in the rain and you're following the contour of the turn, there is a point where your tire will come off of center and it's no longer on the, the big grippy part of a tire. If you look at many tires, you have that nice 
crown part where the nice good rubber is. And then usually on the shoulders, they go to a higher um, a puncture resistant area. And then also on the sidewalls, they may have more cut resistant type plies. Well, that stuff is not very sticky. And so if you kind of make that turn in wet environments, you're not on the best grippy part of that tire. If you choose a race line approach where you cut and you go straight through the corner, you have more adhesion. And that's um, what I always do, whether it's dry or wet. So maybe altering your line through a corner, obviously avoiding all the painted surfaces and anything that looks a little bit questionable. But you know, the race line, in my opinion, is a better option. And then lastly, I wish to talk to you about disc brakes because I think disc brakes have been sold, maybe oversold, as the panacea to everything that road cycling was missing. But in my opinion, tire traction is still the number one um, thing you're looking for. So disc brakes in the rain doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't really help you as much as people think the thing that you still need is tire traction. And a lot of crashes happen because of tire traction. Things like loose over hard, right? So you got decomposed granite over hard packed dirt, or maybe you have sand on paved road, or in this case, that light mist mixed with a little bit of oil or fuel or something and that causes a very slippery surface. No brake system, whether rim or disc, is going to help when you do not have tire traction and the road is slippery. So I wish to just impart on you folks that, okay, just because you have disc brakes, it doesn't mean you're safer in the rain and it's let's go, let's go crazy and let's go ride in the rain because, hey, I got disc brakes now. So yes, the braking power is better than let's say you were riding a carbon rim brake wheel. Carbon rim brake in the rain, terrible, terrible braking. So we all know that. And that's where the disc brakes would have a positive impact on your control. But it all comes down to tire traction. So anyway, that's just a really quick video. Unfortunately, the rider went down. Uh, she suffered a fracture of the upper hip area. And I pretty much knew when she could not put her leg over the saddle to get back on the bike and, and she had to lean the bike pretty far down to throw her leg over. That was the same thing that happened to me in 2014 when I broke my femur and I couldn't throw my leg over and it took me 17 minutes to get back on the bike, but I did get back on the bike. I did climb some more and then eventually I, the pain was excruciating and I went home. There is a blog post I'll link down below in the description. Yes, I rode with a broken femur. <laughs> I don't advise that. But anyway, so let's recap real quick. So the first thing is uh, tire pressure. Pay attention to it. Maybe lower it if, if you know you're going to be in the rain or maybe you're already out in the rain. Number two, the worst time I think is when there's a light mist. Go out after there's been a heavy downpour because that road has been washed away or the debris has been washed away and that be a little that would be a little bit safer. Third thing was tire choice. You decide whether you want a puncture proof tire or a grippy tire. Fourth thing is pay attention to the race line and choose the proper race line instead of making that turn and following the contour of the road. Go straight through it. And fifth, disc brakes isn't everything. Tire traction is everything. Okay, that's all for today. I appreciate your time and your attention. This is a time you like and subscribe and you tell your friends about the channel and please hit that notification bell so you know when I've posted 
another video. That's all for today. In the meantime, we will see you up the road.